Hey everyone, I don't really have the most creative intro for this video like I usually do, so I just won't waste time and we'll just get right into the records. Welcome back to another multi-album review. And as you can tell from the title, these are the two albums that I will be covering this week. We have the new Jaden Records CTV3 Cool Tape Volume 3 and the new Katy Perry album Smile. I mentioned in last week's video that I was going to be covering these albums and as you can tell, they both released with no complications, no delays, nothing like that. So here I am to talk about them. I will say right off the bat that this isn't going to be the most exciting week for albums based on what I heard from these two, but given some of the disastrous records that have come out this year, you could obviously do far worse. Also, as per usual, I'm blabbering on a little bit so that I could get a thumbnail with these two albums in it, but I think I've spoken enough, so let's just get right into the video. First off, I want to talk about the new Jaden album, CTV3 Cool Tape Volume 3. We all know Jaden by now. The son of Will Smith is a prominent rapper on his own, and one that I have covered several times over over on my blog and on this channel. And while Jaden's first three major records, Sire, Sire the Electric Album, and The Sunset Tapes a Cool Tape Story, left me thoroughly unimpressed, he surprisingly won me over last year with his second studio album, Iris. Even though not many people cared for that album, I personally quite liked it, and Jaden made me glad that I, as an album reviewer, don't do the whole three strikes and you're out kind of rule. I wouldn't say Iris turned me into like a super fan of Jaden, but it did make me more interested in seeing what his next move would be, and it turns out that next move is the conclusion to the cool tape chronology that Jaden broke through in the rap game with. Though he supposedly claims that this record is also a conclusion to the Sire and Iris story, supposedly. Now, I'm not as familiar with Jaden's first two volumes of this chronology, but the last time I heard him drop a cool tape was in 2018, with the aforementioned Sunset Tapes a Cool Tape story, which was not very cool. So going into this, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect. This record is 17 tracks in 51 minutes, which is definitely longer than the Sunset Tapes, but that was classified as a mixtape where this is supposedly being classified as an album, and in that regard, the 51 minute length is definitely a bit more palatable than the hour-long journeys of Jaden's last two records, Sire and Iris. So I was hoping that slight brevity would lead to more solid music, but unfortunately this album is a bit of a mixed bag. It starts fine enough, as circa 2015 may not paint Jaden as the greatest vocalist ever, but it does have some rather bouncy, slightly theatrical production that I think works very well for him. And then Falling For You is a bit of a surprise as it reunites Jaden with Justin Bieber after their well-known 2010 collab Never Say Never. It's not a bad track, though it does kind of feel like Jaden trying to make a Beatles song. And I will say Justin definitely outshines Jaden on the track vocally. From there, the album has some good moments, but unfortunately wastes a good bit of its potential. In terms of high points, Rainbow Bap is a minimal but potent boom bat banger with some really slick flows from Jaden. The funk-driven Young in Love once again works thanks to Jaden's twisty flows and funny lyrics. The chill indie rock leaning Cabin Fever succeeds in its relaxed vibe and lyrics that focus on quarantined love. The light photograph succeeds more than many of the other short tracks on here by way of having very memorable melodies and emotional lyrics. The more sneaky Sunburnt carries some of the smaller vibes of the rest of the album, but still see Jaden mixing decent and auto crooning with creative rap flows. The wavy deep end relies more on Jaden's filtered vocals but still works as a vibey sweet cut. And the album's closer Boys and Girls is very fun. It consists of some bouncy pianos, nice vocals from Jaden and what sounds like his sister Willow, and some very encouraging lyrics about love. Despite those tracks being enjoyable though, there are several cuts on here that simply do not land for me. Everything is a mellow trap leaning cut that feels severely lacking in energy or excitement to make Make it stand out. And the Rory featured Endless Summer does have a bouncy beat and some solid flows from both Jaden and Rory, but it does feel a bit monotonous up against a number of the other tracks here. And perhaps the most disappointing thing about the album for me is how much more it could have done. While I'm glad Jaden does away with a lot of the long tracks that I haven't enjoyed much on some of his previous albums, there are plenty of songs here that are the flip side of that, in that they feel too short, and tracks like Lucy, In the Hills, Bad Connection, Muted Sunrise, Drops of Sun, and The Birth of Sire. These kind of tracks range from being wholly unnecessary to extremely wasted potential, and even if some of them sound okay, they feel like gaping examples of Jaden's inability to acknowledge the cutting room floor. Jaden still does not understand that you don't have to bloat an album out. Before, like I said, the problem was that certain tracks felt too long, but here, it feels like he's trying to artificially bloat the album with short, inconsequential tracks that really probably didn't even need to make the album in the first 
first place. Or if they really needed to in his eyes, he could have expanded on them a little bit and found more of a happy medium in length. Instead of making two short tracks or two long tracks, find something that's a good middle ground. And there are several points where it feels like Jaden just still has not found that middle ground. So overall, while Jaden's new record is still a marked improvement over his first few albums and is a decent listen, it's a bit of a disappointment for me given that I quite liked Iris. The album sees Jaden move out of his comfort zone a little bit, which is nice. But again, there are quite a few points where it feels like this record is just missed potential. Outside of some occasional monotone, I still enjoy Jaden's vocals every once in a while. And his flows throughout the songs here can be very creative. Not only that, but I do enjoy the more relaxed vibe of the production, and it sounds great. However, the big problem is, like I said, there's just a lot of wasted potential. In way too many cases, Jaden makes tracks that are just way too short, and when listening to them, it sounds like he's just not prepared to step all the way out of his comfort zone. I appreciate that he cut down on some of the long tracks that were so annoying on his previous records, but at the same time, that doesn't mean I want them to be so short that they feel inconsequential. And too often, it feels like Jaden struggles to find the perfect balance in terms of song length and song structure. And in the context of an album like this that strives to go for a different vibe, it feels like Jaden just wanted to move out of his comfort zone, but didn't feel ready to take more than a few steps. It's a decent effort, and hopefully Jaden can continue to move out of his comfort zone and push himself further. But all in all, this is a step back from Iris for me. Still not too bad, though, and I would say there are definitely a few cuts worth pulling from this album. Overall, I would say that Jaden's CTV3 Cool Tape Volume 3 is going to get an okay rating from me. Again, not the best and definitely disappointing in how much more potential it had, but there are some good tracks here, so I would say just pull some of those tracks and rock with those. You don't really need to listen to the whole album, but there are highlights here that are worth getting into. Now, moving on from there, we are going to be talking about the new Katy Perry album, Smile. Again, we all know Katy Perry at this point. I just talked about her the other day in my latest 10 years later video on her 2010 album, Teenage Dream, one of the biggest albums of the last decade. Katy was massive throughout most of the 2010s, but in the last few years, it feels like she kind of fell off a little bit. Not to say that she wasn't big anymore, but given the astronomical success of Teenage Dream and Prism, it feels like her latest successes haven't been quite what they used to be. While her 2017 album Witness was another number one record for her, it sold far lower than Teenage Dream and Prism and was her first album since her 2001 debut album Katie Hudson to not receive an RIAA certification. It didn't go platinum, it didn't go gold, it did spawn one top 10 billboard hit in Chain to the Rhythm, but the other singles didn't hit as hard, and unfortunately many of Katy Perry's cringy, non-musical moves were getting more notice than the music itself. I didn't pay a lot of attention to the singles for this record, but outside of Never Really Over, which peaked at number 15 on the Billboard Hot 100, none of the other five singles charted too high either. The album itself is 12 tracks and 36 minutes, and a part of me got worried when I heard that there were six singles, since that would have been half the album, but fortunately, two of them are only available in the fan edition of the album, which again is a bit of a relief because it would be kind of disappointing if half of the album was already released as singles, kind of like what happened with Joyner Lucas's album earlier this year. And while I wasn't sure what to expect, I certainly wasn't counting Katy Perry out. After all, just years ago, many were saying that Taylor Swift seemed over, and she proved many critics wrong with a pair of great albums in Lover and Folklore, so I was hopeful that Katy would prove the doubters wrong. But after listening to the album, I'm just not sure what to make of it. As it is, this record doesn't sound all that much different from Katy's previous material to me. Maybe there's a bit more electropop influence, but it feels like Katy is sticking within her roots and focusing on making hits. And because of that, there are a few genuinely solid bops on the album. Never Really Over is a fun, sunny, cute electro song with a chorus that I wasn't sure I'd like, but I do think it fits well into the song. There's also the dark new wave banger Cry About It Later that is honestly one of my favorite Katy Perry songs that I've heard in a while. The lighter daisies that feature some very self-empowering lyrics and great vocals from Katy over some nice guitar strums. The equally light resilient that features one of Katy's most powerful performances on the album. The surprisingly fun title track Smile that's a light, funky, playful bop that I hope gets a bigger single push. And the more emotional Only Love that takes a slightly more introspective feel and ends up being easily my favorite of the back end cuts on the album. But equally, while there are some highs, there are some tracks that just don't work for me. Teary Eyes, despite some catchy vocals, has this feeling as if Katie's trying to do her best Dua Lipa impression, both vocally and sonically. Not the End of the World is a sort of trap-esque song that's completely undone by an extremely weak chorus. Champagne Problems is another dancey song that has a decent chorus, but still feels repetitive coming right after 
Your Smile. Tucked is another decent but unspectacular disco-esque song that once again sounds eerily reminiscent of Dua Lipa. Harley's in Hawaii is a big mixed bag that isn't nearly as bad as I'd been led to believe, but despite its chill mellow vibe, it does feature one of Katie's weakest choruses that I've heard in a while, and the rather nondescript folk-leaning closer What Makes a Woman, despite having a few decent lyrics, just does very little in regards to substance and feels like a bit of a bland closer to the album. Personally, I wish Only Love was the finisher to the record. Overall, Katy Perry has often felt like an inconsistent artist to me, and in the case of this new album, that inconsistency continues. Katy comes through with some genuinely solid tracks here, and I do think the more positive vibe of the album feels nice, but the big gaping issue here for me is that very little of it feels really special. I can't say there are any outright duds in the track list here, but I also can't say I hear much that matches up to some of Katy's best work. It's a record that plays it extremely safe and doesn't see Katy going out of her comfort zone or doing anything we haven't heard before. She still has the vocal chops to carry a song, and if given the right production, she can do very well, but much of this album doesn't feel all that fresh to me, which I kind of pointed out earlier when I mentioned that a few of the tracks sounded like Dua Lipa impressions. It's definitely not bad, and I'm very sure Katy Perry's fans will love it, but as it is, this feels very much like a for fans only kind of album. If you love Katy's music and you've been a fan of her up to this point, you will absolutely love what she's putting out here, but if you don't, this record probably won't convert you into a fan. Overall, I'm gonna say that Katy Perry's smile is, once again, gonna get an okay rating from me. Not bad, and again, if you're a Katy Perry fan, I'm sure you're gonna love it, but again, if you're not a Katy Perry fan, this probably won't change your mind. So yeah, that's this week in terms of new albums. Not the most exciting records I've heard this year, but fortunately, nothing too bad. Honestly, with how shitty 2020's been, I guess two okay albums in one week is a win for me. And hey, at least both records have a few songs that I can pull and continue to go back to even if the full albums surrounding them aren't the best. But again, that's just my opinion on these records. What did you guys think about them? Do you plan to listen to them? Have you listened to them already? Do you love them? Hate them? Are you indifferent towards them? Whatever your thoughts are, just leave them down in the comments section. Let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do. If you guys want to hit like and subscribe, thank you. If not, it's no big deal. I totally understand. In terms of what's next, I'm not seeing a ton in September that's really catching my eye in terms of new albums, though it seems that Ava Max's debut album is coming out this month, so I think I'll try to give that a look, so stay tuned for that review. But until then, thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.